108 years ago, here at Wilton's Music Hall, the great performer Wilkie Bard premiered his new song, She Sells Seashells on the Seashore. <laughs> we'll all remember how the lyrics go. She sells seashells on the seashore, she, the, the shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. For if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. <laughs> this was to become, of course, one of the great tongue twisters of all time. Among actors, Shakespeare is also famous for his tongue twisters. Many a an actor has slipped on the line with his Circe's success. <laughs> and anyone who's played Caliban in The Tempest will know how hard it is to say, but she is far but she as far <laughs> surpasses Sycorax. <laughs> anyway, as we're celebrating Shakespeare here at Wilton's, I thought I'd deliver a little lecturette about tongue twisters. For reasons that may well become clear over the next few minutes, they are rarely spoken, these lectures, uh, or tongue twisters, <laughs> in public. Like uh, many men who play tennis, when I hit a ball into the net, I tend to look daggers at my racket, reproaching it for playing so badly when I myself have been playing so well. <laughs> the other day I threw a further insult in its direction, an anerat anerratic racket, I said. <laughs> then I tried to repeat it, an erratic racket, and then an racket. It was at this very moment that I realised that I just invented a brand new tongue twist. <laughs> One of my fellow players pointed out that an erratic racket is itself a variation on a cricket critic. <laughs> so I suggested combining the two to create a cricket critic with an erratic racket. <laughs> and entering this great new tongue twister into the World Tongue Twisting Championship, which no doubt, doubt takes place in Aberystwyth, or perhaps in a particularly tough year in Lanfair Pwyl... Pwyl... Yes, Steve, can you help me out? Yes, I'm advised to swing it, go get a swing to go, and to see you, go, go, go. I suppose that the first tongue twister I ever learned was Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. This was followed closely by the wittier how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> Which what comes with the slightly non-committal answer, a woodchuck would wood chuck all the wood he could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. <laughs> Needless to say, an American pedant once worked out an accurate answer to that <laughs> great woodchuck question, calculating that if a woodchuck could chuck wood, then a woodchuck could chuck about 700 pounds of wood <laughs> if it was chucking very hard. <laughs> so now you know. With an erratic ratic still ringing in my ears, I tried it out on a couple of children with equal success. I'd half imagined that in these days of computer games, the tongue-twisting tradition might have died out among the younger generation, but not a bit of it. Both of them tried plenty of their own tongue-twisters on me, some old, some new. I found a proper cup of coffee from a proper cop copper coffee cup. Co <laughs> Particularly troublesome. I sat through the first section, a proper cup of coffee from a, with ease, but alas, fell over headfirst on the so second, a popper cropper coffee cup. <laughs> a new favourite among children seems to be Ken Dodd's dad's dog's dead. <laughs> Which presumably also has the merit after all these years of being true. <laughs> Incidentally, I know a second joke, this one isn't a tongue twister, concerning Ken Dodd, uh, that requires a certain amount of knowledge of his act, which the older among you will know. When you, and this really works, if you meet someone in a public place, you just tell them, Ken Dodd came here yesterday, and they always say, did he? And you say, no, Doddy! <laughs> Uh, one of the many joys of tongue twisters is that they serve no purpose beyond fun. So when you say, or at least try to say, she sells seashells on the seashore, or of all the felt I ever felt, I never felt a piece of felt which felt the same as that felt felt when I first felt the felt of that felt hat. <laughs> there, there is something, 
pleasing in its non-utilitarianism, <laughs> which in itself is a bit of a tongue twister. I suppose the only tongue twister that has ever served any real purpose is the phrase, the leaf police dismissive us, which is said to be the phrase that the police make suspects repeat so as to prove that they aren't drunk. <laughs> For the same reason in the P.G. Woodhouse novel, Jeeves and the Feudal Spirit, Bertie was to get Jeeves to repeat, Theodore Oswald Thistle, the thistle sifter, sifting a sack of thistles, thrust three thorns through the thick of his thumb. <laughs> Some tongue twisters contain additional booby traps, so that the old words re-emerge as proper new words, giving the original sentence an entirely new meaning. My favourite of these is, one smart feather, he felt smart. One smart, say it, I want everyone to say it three times, very, very quickly. One smart fella, he smelt for oh! I don't know what you need to say. That was a genuine mistake. Um, you only get sophisticated humour here. It is only, it's only if you happen to be a newscaster or an actor that the tongue twister spells real peril. American newscasters are said to dread having to get through the phrase former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Whilst here in Britain, our very own James Nocte lived up to his surname when he stumbled over those fatal words, Culture Secretary Jeremy Hunt. <laughs> the, finally, the great character actor, Victor Madden, once distinguished himself in Dixon of Doc Green. Given the words, it's down at Doc Green Nick. He came out with, it's down at Dick Green Doc. <laughs> and he then tried to correct himself by saying, it's, do it's down at Doc Green Dick. <laughs> he then completely lost his temper, saying, who writes these bloody scripts? Can't I just say, down at the Nick and fuck Doc Green? <laughs>